Welcome to the Status Report highlight for the 11th of July 2017. It's going to be rather brief and dry this time as some of the team are on their summer holidays, while the rest of the team are working super hard keeping the development process going. And we're going to kick things off with lead producer Yujin. Daisy has always been a bit of a hybrid MMO, a combination of character and world persistence where instances act like shards themselves, and the official set of servers focus on the vanilla experience, with the future expectation of additional variety with customizable modded servers. By being that open, we close some doors for us to go full on on the notion of a never-ending progression in an online world, one that games like Destiny or The Division utilize. On the other hand, we still want to keep the idea that allows one player to spend a life of multiple characters across these shards, and have the variety of these different experiences that are consistent with our vision. As Brian has also explained in the previous status reports, I just want to say that the main idea behind the recent tap separation is to maintain two separate worlds for our players, the vanilla one where you expect a consistent experience, and the community one where, when beta hits, you'll see a large variety of different gameplay and tweaks, with as much information as we can provide on the types of changes you'll experience there. Our goal is not to hide these community experiences, but only to show and highlight the difference. Eugen understands that the majority of people play on private servers nowadays, as there is more of a curation as to what happens there and the dangers of vanilla, where anything can happen, might not be suitable for everybody. But we do believe that giving a choice of information about these differences will be crucial going forward when server files are released. You'll get a large variety of gameplay and setups, and less of a curated community vanilla experience that we at Bohemia will focus on. We expect that the community will supply different maps, PvP modes, roleplay and more. Daisy Mod is a good experience to look back on, as it was spawned multiple mods and changes. While vanilla experience attracted less and less of a player focus over time, which is understandable, as you spend hundreds of hours there and want to try new things in this never-ending world. We want to see the same thing, with less hassle around doing so. You want to play a mod? We want you to see what the mod is, make the flow of playing without any obstruction, and we want to highlight these different experiences for players seeking them. Eugen also wants to touch up on the subject of 0.62 development, as it's slowly closing up with the last couple of critical fixes getting merged in, such as crash fixes. When we move on, we want to be sure that your experience is as stable as it can be, within the limits of knowing that everything is going to change when beta hits. All these small things will help us with this huge transition. And as Eugen has said multiple times, we believe that we have something great ahead of us that will realize the vision all of us have had for what sometimes feels as forever. So yes, we are now focusing on combat first and foremost in our internal version, and we want to share that with you as soon as possible. There are multiple build reviews every week as we march towards this long-awaited goal. To give a glance at the currently open development items in our teams. Programmers, Vehicle Control Refactor, New Animation System for Infected, Animation Events for Player, Communication System Optimization, Mosin 1930 Basic State Machine and Script Class, MP133 Basic State Machine and Script Class, MP5 Basic State Machine and Script Class, CLE Central Loot Economy Tweaks, Physics and Optimization Tweaks, Bug Fixing, Animators, M4A1 Animations, Player Turns for Pistols, Unarmed and One-Hit Reactions, Player Graph Fixes, IK Inverse Kinematics Poses, Designers, New Player and Item Spawn Definition, Player Action Targeting and Floating Cursor, User Actions in Multiplayer, Advanced Placing System, Inventory UI Refactor, Crafting and Character, Aiming Model, Melee Combat Targeting, Traps with Grenades, Weapons Handling, Audio, Bug Fixing, Sounds for Animals, QA, Playtesting the 0.62 Update, 0.62 Feature Testing, Internal Client Stabilization and Central Loot Economy Testing, Art, Old Assets Rework, Detailed Object Layout for Western Border, Locations West of Lopatino, Northwest Airfield Overhaul, Location Names Revision. So as we can see from this ever-changing list, new things are being updated, leading towards the new animation system, etc. for the beta release. And yes, I will be getting back big time on DayZ when beta is finally released, 0.63 and onwards, 12 hour streams, loads of videos testing out all the new features. Oh yeah, links in the description below. Enough of my BS, let's move on to senior map designer Adam. With 0.62 update being on stable brands for over a month now, we have pretty much transitioned strictly to goals for the update 0.63 and onwards. Primary focus being the overhaul of the Northwest Airfield, finalization of tourist trails and additional locations on the western border of Chernerus. 
along with overall tweaks to the area. In this status report, Adam would like to touch a bit on the topic of plans on the western border. Where are we going with the changes and additions we are working on now? Our aim is to preserve its wilderness look. We won't be populating this part of the map with lots of settlements, like we did up north. Instead of that, we are focusing on adding more lonely locations, such as lodges, tourist destinations, and tourist trails will be extended to the western border and industrial farm locations. That being said, Western Border is quite a huge area by itself, so it would be a shame to not include anything that would resemble a settlement. There are currently three tiny settlements in the works, most of them composed of a few houses scattered around without some structures, like you are used to in the mainland of South Zagoria. The pictures on screen now show one particular settlement location just south of the new castle that has been added in Update 0.62, and has already received more details and polish. Please keep in mind that these pictures show work-in-progress content. And just to give you an idea how we imagine some lonely locations, here is a screenshot of a lonely lodge somewhere on the western border. And now, a final word from brand manager Martin. While we're still very much on hold with pushing any release buttons for DayZ on PC and consoles, fun fact I actually purchased an Xbox One S just for DayZ. I, I do play other stuff, but uh, record DayZ and bring it to the channel for those that are curious. As the development is breezing towards beta, I'm more than happy to share some of the excitement that's currently flowing through the veins of everybody at the Bohemia Mobile team. On July 3rd, after some time of soft launch testing, they finally launched the iOS and Android version of Mini Daisy Worldwide. Peggy 16. Being 100% free to play, there's no catch, no in-app purchases or hidden transactions, it's just free, plain and simple. I haven't had a chance to try this myself yet, but I will try it soon, probably while I'm on the toilet. And that's pretty much it for this week's status report, dry and brief as we'd said. But one more final message from me, a lot of negative and misinforming videos have been popping up over the last 6 months as I'm sure you are aware. No, I'm not saying development has been perfect, nobody's perfect. But the main means of ammunition towards the development of DayZ has been the 2015 roadmap. But those of you who follow the official status reports, my videos, or DAISY development in general closely, would have noticed that this was addressed in a following status report. And I am fairly certain that it does predate all of these negative videos. The status report in question is from the 8th of November, 2016, and mentions the backlog consisting mainly of what is in the 2015 roadmap after the decision to move to the Infusion engine. Because, as we know, Legacy Tech just wasn't capable of doing what the team had envisioned. This is all mentioned in the first section of said status report by Creative Director Brian Hicks. With that being said, the team had admitted making some mistakes in the past. Whether it be communicating this information across the community in a better way, or general development decisions. Those of you who know me, know that I don't like to get involved in the negative, as this stuff could always have a negative impact on my channel. And let's be honest, these negative videos have had a negative impact on DayZ, which in turn has had a negative impact on me already. But the point is here that we are all human, nobody's perfect, and we all make mistakes. So stay positive, folks. We all want DayZ now, but there are plenty of other things to keep our minds occupied during that wait. Thank you for joining me on this status report highlight for the 11th of July, 2017. All links are in the description. Remember to read the status reports in full for yourselves for the most amount of information that they hold. And on that bombshell, I'll see you peeps next time. Oh hey, still here? I have a Patreon page also, so if you're willing to support me in the content I create, head on over to the link in the description below. Every penny counts and is very much appreciated. Also, don't forget to follow me on my social media pages Twitter and Facebook. You can find links to those in the description as well.